Hi there, everybody. It's me again. Um, no, not Dracula's daughter. And you keep thinking it, and you think, "Oh my God, she's back again on the old screen." But here I am. I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm like a rash, one of those little rashes that that you get, and you put cream on it, you think it's gone over, and 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 it's, it's cured. Hold on, excuse me. Simba, stop! But all of a sudden, bam! People are just backing away from him because you're covered in the bloody in rash again. So that's me for you. So there you go. Anyway, right, I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all okay. I'm um, doing well here today. Um, no makeup on. And I'm trying to get rid of this bloody baggy chin here. Because it's awful. Look at it. See a bit? Look. So I, I don't need to take a shopping bag with me when I go out. I put all the shopping in there. I'm like a pelican really with my neck like this. So um, so I've got to try and do some exercises to get like that, or better yet, I suppose people, some of you out there would think, oh yeah, wrap something around that bloody neck and, and tighten it as well. But um, <laughs> there you go. Anyway, right, um, I got a, um, a lovely message from from a dear friend which I have known for about, oh God, Alison, I can't remember how, I don't know how, what was it, 19 years? I think it's 19, 20 years I've, I've known Ali, and, um, and she got in touch with me yesterday. We haven't seen each other in about two, three years, and um, she's living in Cardiff. So, but um, but yes, so um, and she texted me, messaged me yesterday, saying, "Oh, you know, watching watching my videos makes her miss me even more, hearing my voice, blah 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 blah." blah. And one thing she did touch on is the fact that the video is a bit too long. Well, I do apologise about that. Um, I don't know how to edit or anything like that at the moment. I'm still working on that, so um, bear with me. And I do apologise if I'm just droning on and on and on. People that really know me and see me on a regular basis know that's the kind of person I am. Um, and I never stop talking, believe me. Even in my sleep, I suppose I talk. I don't know. Nobody's ever told me. No one sleeps with me and the dogs can't talk to me. No. Well, anyway, so I hardly sleep anyway, but uh, that's, a, that's another story. Um, Right, uh, what I'm going to talk, talk about today is just all this crap about trans people, or well, trans women in general actually, um, specifically trans women. Um, there was a thing on BBC last night, I don't, know, I don't know if any of you watched it, I suppose a couple of you did, and the rest is all, oh, or a load of, what a load of cods, well, uh, um, Martini Rossi, whatever the name is, nope, that's a drink, isn't it? Yeah, I thought so, Martina what? Well, <gasps> Martina Navratilova, yeah, her. She was saying that trans women should not um, join in sports with um, cisgendered women, uh, basically uh, women that, that were born girls, were born female and everything like that. Um, because, because it puts, it puts the, um, the, the, uh, the cis women um, at a disadvantage. So for instance, if, if, um, if a guy trans, um, if a trans transitions to, to be a woman has the full surgery and all the hormones and whatever and they seem to think that they still have the strength of the male body afterwards well I can categorically tell you now um, that's not true at all it's basically um, the strength does diminish it uh, you have to go back and build back up again because because that's what estrogen does it's um, it weakens you. It really does weaken well, weaken us trans people. But um, but anyway. But my answer to that is Martina. Um, thirty, forty, or say thirty, 20, even twenty years ago, it was virtually unheard of to have gay people in sports. Um, they hid it very well, and um, and there's a big uproar then about it. And Martina Navratilova, if you don't know who she is, she's um, a, well, a, a, a famous te a lesbian tennis player, a gay tennis player. Um, that's won Wimbledon God knows how many times um, and she's very very good at it so very very good at it but now she's in the last six months or so she's come out with all this palaver about oh trans women should not be um, in the same competition as cisgendered women and um, in a way I do agree with that but in a way I don't because um, the way that I, that I do agree with it is why should we, if we want to compete, why should we compete against cisgendered women? Because doesn't that put, put us at an, at an advantage, disadvantage? Um, 
why not have um, a trans Olympics or a trans European athletics and things like that, like we do with um, with the uh, with the gay Olympics? Um, you know, so why not? So like that way, everybody will be happy, no one will be arguing, and then slowly um, integrate um, into you know, so I have have the best of both worlds afterwards. You know, so like the best of of the cis females and the best of the trans females competing against each other afterwards um, in, in another sort of European sport, maybe I don't know, but but something like that instead of people being vicious and spouting venom about trans women in sport is just ridiculous. And um, I did say I wasn't going to be political about it. It's not. It's nothing to do with politics. It's to do with sport. And um, and maybe yes, yes, we um, we are at a disadvantage. And um, believe me, if I went into sport, I wouldn't win a bloody thing. The only thing I would win was like the slow starter, and that'd be me. It'll it'd take me about a week just to, just to do a mile run, basically. It would. Do. Um, I know you can see my nails there. Look at them, aren't they gorgeous? The colour that's. Um, that's Bobby Brown colour. It's called chameleon. It basically changes colour if you if you add an, uh, another another colour on top of it. It just changes colour. Um, and and if you if you put clear varnish and it goes darker, it's called chameleon. And this is chameleon blue, which is absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? That's stunning. It takes literally seconds to dry. Uh, that's got four about. That's had about four coats on it today. And I know the, the nails don't look 100 percent because I'm not, I do them myself and I'm not very good at it yet. But I'm I'm learning. I'm learning. But anyway, so yes, going back to that, so like, that's what I think about it. Um, and most probably I, I will get all these um, trans and gay women getting in touch with me in the future, going, oh, you can't say that, oh, oh, that's just discrimination, mm -mm -mm, or whatever like that. It's only discrimination if it affects a whole group of, in, in society. That's the only time it's, it's discrimination. It's um, If it's affecting people from... Um, from doing what they want to do in sport, then why not change the goalposts as it were? So why not have a trans football team? Why not have a trans athletic team? Why not have um, a trans swimming team? Um, wouldn't that be better than just fighting every five seconds? Going, uh, uh, and and then we can, all, you know, all the people that are into the sport can. Um, it's okay, I just thought I heard something. Then. No, it's not. Um, all, all the people can then. Um, and concentrate on their chosen sport and be the best they can instead of infighting and backbiting and backstabbing and everything like that, you know, and then sort it all out slowly but surely. And and this this is where I get really angry with with a, a lot of so-called political groups and um, and I'm talking about the um, the trans groups that, that don't get me wrong, a lot of you know, so a lot a lot of things that they've done has helped. You know, the trans community immensely over the years and you know and, and I'm forever thankful for them and and if it wasn't for them things wouldn't be as they are today um, e even though there's there is a long way to go but still you know we're, we are in a much better place today than we were say 10 years ago um, sometimes we might think it but we are believe me we are um, but when we literally push and push and push all the time then people are going to going to dig their heels in and say, no, 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 you, you're you not going to do that. You're not going to say that. You're not going to have that. So basically, what we need to do as a community is stop pushing, but start educating people. It's like, look, we are human beings. We're not ogres. Well, not all of us. Some of us maybe. It depends on the time of year. And if it's a full moon, then I become a werewolf. You know what I mean? And I'm all like, no. But there you go. <laughs> but um, yes, yeah, so... Um, you know, so that is just stop politicizing genders, and this is what's going on. Like transgenderism is now very political, and that's and that's why I believe that's why a lot of people don't want to understand because they think, oh no, no, just troublemakers. And this is this is what it was like in the eighties and the nineties, seventies, eighties, and uh, especially in the eighties and nineties with, with with the gay community. Everybody was against uh, was was against gay people. Because it was like because because the gay community, um, even though they did lots of good work as well for the gay community, th there were some very, very overzealous people in there that pushed too much, and that that got people turned against us, and um, and on the gay community, and it's happening again now in the trans community. Like I said, like I said in the last video, it's like um, 
the um, the phobia, uh, the transphobia today is akin to uh, homophobia um, in the eighties and nineties. Um, that's how I feel because because I got it, I I had it um, because I lived as a gay boy. That's the only way I thought I could fit in and everything. So it was just horrendous in those days. Well, not, not for, well, it was for me personally. I, I chased, nearly got stabbed twice, got beaten up loads of times, and ho hospitalised because of it. And that was because they thought I was being gay. But I was, I was gay. And of course, I wasn't gay. And I wasn't gay. I was trans. But of course, in those days. There was no such, well there was, but was very, very hush-hush and very kept on. So, so basically I, I dressed up as a, a gothy, punky, kind of alternatively grungy kind of person and, and that's how I dealt with it. And um, used to get chatted up and, um, you know, so he lives, you know, good girl. I used to get chatted up and everything like that, but those were the days, you know, so but now it's okay, I still get chatted up now, but it's not it's it's i don't have to hide behind anything anymore it's 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 like in those days in the 80s and 90s i hid behind loads of makeup and the young just clothes because we're not gonna be, we, you know so you say people say oh, and i was saying so like, oh no i don't want people to look at me i i i, I just want i, I want to be you know so just invisible but in order for me to be invisible i made myself ultra visible does that make sense it's like i went overboard and through that it was just like um another skin covering me and like a sheath as it were so like no we're not talking condoms <laughs> now but um and and that's how um i actually dealt with um with